Making aloe products takes quick hands. La penca, que siempre, según va saliendo la penca, ya echan su espina. A good knife. Diariamente tenemos que filetear alrededor de 3,000 a 3,500 penca cada empleado. And lots of plants. It takes about 20 aloe leaves to make just one gallon of aloe vera juice. But some aloe products have been found to contain no aloe at all. It's so easy to, to put out a fake aloe product, so there are all kinds of synthetic gels. So how are real aloe vera products made? And can we spot the legit stuff in a $625 million industry? We visited the largest aloe farm in the world to find out. Universal Aloe's farm covers 5,000 acres here in the Dominican Republic. While there are hundreds of types of aloe plants, this farm chose Aloe Barbadensis Miller because it has 20 amino acids. Minerals, vitamins, carbohydrates, hormones, and other bioactive substances. Once the baby plants are in the ground, it takes about eight months for them to mature. About 750 people harvest these fields. They're dispatched in groups, harvesting section by section. Siempre uno le quita la penca que está llena y uno la corta y le quita la punta, quita la, las espinas. Y en la parte de abajo es en, en el tronco, como digamos. O sea, le cortamos las pencas maduras, la, yo la agarro penca por penca para no maltratar la mata, la que va a quedar. The cut leaves won't grow back, but the plants will grow new ones. It will take them about a week to harvest just this one area. La caloría, el sol es demasiado fuerte que es lo difícil de este trabajo, pero uno ya está acostumbrado a aguantarlo porque son cosas que uno lo necesita. One by one, workers pick up all the harvested leaves and toss them into a truck. Those leaves head to a processing plant two miles up the road. Aquí llega diariamente 260.000 libras de pencas frescas, como le expliqué en la finca. Y eso es convertido diariamente en 20.000 galones de jugo fresco para exportación. El proceso se inicia con el lavado y desinfección de la planta. The leaves go through a bath of chlorinated salt water to kill off any little critters from the field that may be hanging around. Then they get trimmed. Se remueven junto con la cabeza y la cola para que la penca quede en situación de poder ser extraído el filete en el área de fileteado. Y luego se da un segundo lavado. This jiggly fillet is the gel inside the aloe leaf. That's what's used in real aloe vera juice, gel, or skin care products. Nosotros utilizamos la mano de obra humana para sacar el filete de la hoja de aloe To do it, they need a really good knife. Yo lo apodo el rayo, porque cuando yo lo cojo, yo siento que voy rapidísimo con él. Ella hace trabajo solo por mí. They might make it look easy, but filleting takes precision. También tiene que estar exactamente en el punto para poder sacar el cristal de la loja bien y perfecto. Mayormente hay mucha diferencia. Cuando viene la sábila grande se siente bien porque uno rinde más. Pero cuando viene la sábila pequeña, uno pasa mucho trabajo para filetearla y se siente como debe y se le va el deseo a uno de trabajar. And they have to move fast, filleting 3,500 leaves a day. Los fileteros más rápidos somos muchos. Hay muchos y a veces nos ponemos a echar competencia para saber mayormente cuál es más rápido y somos muchos los más rápidos que hay. Many aloe companies use machines for filleting. El proceso de producción que llevamos a cabo es muy artesanal. Alrededor del 80% de todo nuestro proceso es manual, porque hay mucho menos desperdicio y porque la planta nuestra, es, la hoja es muy irregular en su morfología. The leftover leaf bits go back out into the field as compost, and the buckets of fillets, those get weighed, then poured onto this big table. Workers here will inspect them for any leftover leaf bits, which they'll then slice off. Once it's all clear, the fillets head to the shredder, which grinds them into a pure aloe gel. Y desde aquí pasan hacia estos serpentines de pasteurizado o UHC. Se eliminan cualquier tipo de impurezas y de bacterias que pudieran tener el jugo. 
At this point, ascorbic acid is added to extend the shelf life. Nuestro producto es 99.9% aloe vera puro y el otro 0.1% es ácido ascorbico. The gel flows into the spill-proof bag. Estas dos cabezas robóticas son las que se encargan de comar, coger la tapa de la funda metalizada, abrirla, llenar la funda y cerrarla automáticamente sin que haya ningún contacto con el medio ambiente. This bag is then vacuum sealed and put into a bigger metal box. The whole process from leaf to this container takes only about three hours. But before the shipment can leave the factory, its contents have to be tested for quality assurance. Alrededor de 20, 25 muestras diariamente. Hay un análisis que es el físico químico. En el físico químico analizamos lo que es el pH, la viscosidad, la parte de color, textura y todo lo concerniente a la apariencia del, del jugo como tal. Me toma alrededor de una hora hacer este tipo de análisis. Only when a container passes the lab tests can it be released for shipment. These ones are bound for Rotterdam in the Netherlands. There, the gel will be pumped into bottles for forever living products. But not every bottle of aloe is made like this. In 2015, ConsumerLab.com tested 10 aloe products for ingredients. Half of them failed our tests. A 2016 Bloomberg investigation found that Walmart, CVS, and Target's aloe products contain no evidence of aloe at all. It's so easy to put out a fake aloe product. So there are all kinds of synthetic gels. Often you'll see the word like carbomer is a synthetic gel. And if you see a clear gel, you have no idea if it's really aloe or carbomer. Most aloe products aren't closely regulated by the FDA. That's because they're considered supplements or cosmetics, not drugs. So a product can say it contains aloe, but it could mean a range of things. It really does contain aloe filet, or it's the whole leaf ground up and not just that inner filet. Or it's a synthetic gel and there's actually no aloe, which won't hurt you, but doesn't have any of the supposed benefits of aloe. There's not a lot of regulation or oversight of aloe products. It's also hard to regulate because aloe grows naturally all over the Americas. And its gel has been used for thousands of years to heal burns and reduce inflammation. The challenge is translating that history to our current rigorous medical examination. Another problem is there isn't clear scientific proof of aloe's healing powers. Some studies have shown it helps soothe burns and speed up healing while others show no effect on burns. So it's not that aloe doesn't help. The evidence isn't there right now. The outer rind of the leaf has been found to have a laxative compound called aloin. One study found that it caused cancer in rats, while another found it helped with constipation. But the FDA has banned aloe from being sold as an over-the-counter laxative drug. There's no patent on aloe, and so there isn't a lot of incentive for companies to be putting lots of money into clinical studies. They don't really need to do those studies to get these products on the shelf. Still, consumers worldwide are flocking to aloe as they embrace more natural products. Universal Aloe saw a 30% increase in demand in 2020. As consumers navigate this growing market, how can we identify the products made with real aloe vera? Well, Todd says it's actually really tricky, but he did have a few suggestions. First, you should always check the ingredient list. You want to see aloe, you want to see it's first. You really need to be super careful on the wording because if it just says leaf, it could be any part of the leaf. You could be getting the latex, which you don't want, unless you want a laxative effect. Look out for tricky wording, like 100% gel. That could mean there is 100% gel, but not all of it is aloe filet. So you really need to know what part of the leaf is being made. When they say aloe gel, is it a gel that's made from blending up the whole leaf, or is it truly just pure aloe gel? Despite these uncertainties, experts don't expect the demand for aloe to dip anytime soon. 